YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back. And Super Bowl 54 is set between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. I'm pumped. Can't wait. I think it's going to be a great matchup. we got to wait two weeks until that matchup. In the meantime, we got some interesting videos for you guys. Very interesting one right here. I'm going to take a look at my top five contenders for next year's Super Bowl. Super Bowl 55, which we played in 2021. I know it's a way too early stage, but we always could come back after free agency and after the draft when uh, kind of have a better idea and uh, update this. But pretty interesting. Who could be in the Super Bowl next year? Who are the top five contenders? Another point to keep in mind is Things change year to year. You know, last a year ago from today, maybe if somebody said the Niners were going to the Super Bowl, people probably would have thought they were crazy, you know. So things change, you know, a lot of new playoff teams every single year, teams in, teams out. Um, so you can't really expect the same exact teams every year, but we kind of have an idea, some of those good teams that, that they'll remain very good. So we're going to break it down, may have a surprise or two. Right before we get started on that, uh, 40K subscriber, go on both of our channels. We actually have a newer channel, the Goat House Plus, link in the description and comments. Please subscribe to that as well. Um, some uploads on the way in the near future that's different than on, on this channel, and it's our backup channel in case something happens again to this channel. Uh, trying to reach that, go on both, predicting games all year, every single game. We predict every single NFL season, but we only got one big game left, but don't worry, free agency NFL draft content like crazy here at the Goat House, so we never stop all year long. Goat House, NFL, that is our Twitter. Link in the description and comments for that. Please follow it. Constantly talking football every single day, answering any questions, and we have channel updates on there. Link in the description and comments for that, as well as the Patreon, uh, which will be adding some bonus content to there, there which already has it, but we'll add it, be adding some more very soon. Before we get started with my top five, I have some other teams that I did not include that I do want to talk about here, actually. So these four teams I did not include in my top five, and there's a reason for it. kind of shows it's a very early stage, but again, we'll update this. We'll come back to this at the appropriate times, but it is pretty cool to predict the top five at, at this stage, kind of get an idea who could be in the Super Bowl next year. Uh, but Titans, I, I love this Titans team. They had a very good run this year, very balanced. As soon as they got John Robinson for GM in there, he, he's built a great team. He's had some great drafts, you know, even looking at my board. Um, you know, and then who they took, you know, I've lo I love their draft since the drafts ended, you know, right then and there since they take, took those, took those guys. Um, but why I couldn't really include them is because they have tons of free agents right now. Um, you know, I can sit here and predict, which we'll do in plenty of videos that they'll probably franchise tag Ryan Tannehill and they'll probably re-sign Derrick Henry to a big deal, but it's tough to say right now. It's very tough to say, uh, because, because we basically have to assume at this point, and there's too much to assume here. You know, Tannehill, um, you know, could he – I expect him to be the quarterback, but right now the quarterback position's open. And running back, there's actually – if you if you pulled or if you looked at each front office, each GM in the NFL, I'd say majority by a good amount of those, um, you know, people, those executives, you know, they, they don't believe in signing a running back to a big deal or long term. They just kind of reset that position. It's not really a rebuild. You reset that position, draft a new one, because, you know, it's fresh legs, not going to be as far off. Um, you know, so that could be possible. But, you know, I'm leaning towards they re-sign Derrick Henry because I even kind of think that way too. You know, I, I don't want to give a huge contract to a running back. To me, it's not worth it to waste the cap on a running back. But I even may, may an accept, make an exception for a guy like Derrick Henry. So it's still up in the air, actually. It's kind of weird to hear that, but, I, you know, my money is on them re-signing Derrick Henry, but it's still kind of up in the air because what kind of money does he want? Do they want to spend that on running back when they have a pretty complete team? They just got they can just add another one, you know. So it's tough for me to put the Titans in there right now, um, you know, and what kind of Tannehill will we get next year? You know, they're pretty unpredictable this year. So there's a lot of questions there. There, there was too many question marks for me to put them in there right now, but after an offseason, I expect them to be a top-five team. The Saints, another one. I mean, all three quarterbacks, if you want to talk, Taysom Hill is a free agent as well. I really don't know who their quarterback's going to be next year. You know, I'll tell you what I think they should do. People may not like it. Uh, if you choose Breeze over Teddy Bridgewater and Bridgewater leaves to go start somewhere, I think that would be a huge, huge mistake. Um, you're only helping yourself for right now, and maybe not even that, because Teddy Bridgewater played at a pretty high level, and Breeze ain't going to, let's not be, let's not be shy about it here, he's not going to, he's not getting any better at this point, he's still great, but he's not getting any better, um, even though the last time we saw him this year, you know, he didn't play so hot in the playoff game, it's one game, 
Um, but I don't know what they're going to decide there. It's a it's a tough, tough decision if they have to choose one or the other. That It's tough, and that might be the option. And improve it, I kind of got a question mark there because it's not really a team that's like rapidly getting – it's not one of those teams that's rapidly getting better. It's a team that's always very good. It's not a team that, you know, that's showing me that they can, you know, take that next step from where they were this year. Um, you know, so a lot of question marks for the Saints as well. Same goes for the Patriots, pretty similar to the Titans. They have tons of free agents, um, not just at the quarterback position. Um, you know, guys on both sides of the ball on the offensive line. Uh, and then Brady, we really don't know what's going on with Brady. If I had to put money on it at this moment, I'd say he's back. But it's really up in the air, and people got got us all wondering. So we don't really know how the Patriots are going to look. And they took a, you know, a step down this year. And then the Packers are another one. Um, you know, Rodgers kind of like Breeze. You know, where is he at? You know, he's not getting better. Um, you know, he still made it to the NFC Championship game this year, but he's, you know, he's not going to get better. Is he going to say the same? There's a lot of questions there. Uh, and then need more offensive help. Kind of goes into, you know, because I kind of predict the offseason with some of these top five teams, but the Packers, I cannot really predict their offseason. They were never big on signing free agents or big free agents. And for the finally in the first year here, for the first time that they went big on defense, which they desperately needed to do, and they did a great job. And why why are these the Packers are one of the teams I kind of want to include is because I think this defense takes a huge step up. I think they need to brush up on some spots, but this could be a top five defense next year, and it was pretty good this year. Um, you know, so that's kind of why I want to. You know, but with Rodgers, where he's where he's at, I'm not trying to say he is declining or he's not. Um, you know, where he's at, and, and then. Can they, you know, it's kind of, it's a big question. Can they do do it right in offseason, you know, making the offense better? Because, you know, they've done a good job drafting over the years, but kind of, you know, the problem was they wouldn't go out and kind of spend the money where they desperately needed it. So kind of a question mark there for a lot of these teams, and that's why they are not in my top five, but definitely teams that could be my top five after, we'll say, free agency or the NFL draft. Now onto my top five, um, number five. I got the Ravens at number five, maybe the best team on this year in the regular season. I'd say the best team from the regular season this year. Uh, and had a chance to, to make the run and win the Super Bowl this year. You know, I think, you know, the Titans were a pretty bad matchup for them. You know, maybe if they played the Chiefs at one point, maybe they could have got by them. You know, it's all about the matchups, some, some, you know, sometimes. Uh, very good team. You know, Lamar Jackson being that good, going to be the MVP this year. Um, you know, that athletically gifted and, and still improving on the passing game. This team's always going to be, you know, top notch. I don't have full trust in this offensive coaching staff, honestly. I never really did. You know, I think people hyped him up a little too much this year. I think it was pretty much Lamar, the Lamar system. It, you know, to me, it wasn't any, any coach's system. Um, you know, so that's kind of a knock on them, I guess, a little bit. It's, you know, it could be a lot, lot worse. They're not bad in any way. Love the defense coaching staff, though. Martindale sticking around as of now. Uh, you know, it's a well-coached defense. They're going to lose some guys. They're going to bring some guys in. They're always getting better talent in. I, I trust that they can on both sides of the ball. The You know, they need another weapon maybe at the re receiver position. I, I trust that they can do that in this draft class. I trust that they will do that. They realize that. Um, you know, they already got some young talent, you know, here and there on the team. They locked up the, the their, their young their young duo at cornerback, you know, Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey, or Marlon Humphrey being on the younger side there. Um, so I really like this team all the way through. Yeah, there's some, you know, why they didn't go to the Super Bowl this year. You know, that, I guess they didn't have that extra, you know, the extra, you know, besides the, the outside running ability on offense. You know, maybe they need a little more downfield ability on offense to get through the Titans. Um, you know, and then you know, maybe some spots on defense. You know, pass rush could be a little better. Uh, could you know retool? I guess the you know the, the whole linebacker core because that kind of goes into pass rush and off the ball linebacker for the three four defense there. Um, you know, so I trust they can do that. You know, the only downside. You know, I'm talking top five teams here. So obviously, it's all positive for these top five teams. This is a good thing that they're on here. Um, people will overreact, but. You know, maybe why they're at five and they're not at number one or, you know, around there, even though all these teams are tight, is because we've seen the Titans, you know, they figured out how to game plan against this team. You know, they, they figured out. So maybe with time here, and you know, think about it. NFL season, you know, some teams don't see them, but a lot of teams see them, maybe even more than once. Division teams, you know, once they see them again and have the film. You know, that's it, it, kind of why teams kind of go downhill sometimes after a great system. I'm not saying it's going to happen here. Obviously, I have them in, in my top five. Uh, but teams could start to figure them out, and that's that's a little concern. Maybe that's why they're not higher than five. Uh, number four, a team that's actually in the Super Bowl right now, San Francisco 49ers. So back in my top five, a team that was, you know, picking towards the top of the NFL draft for years and years. So some rough years. I know they had some injuries maybe last year, for an example. Uh, and now at the top of the NFL, so it kind of proves that teams could do this. You know, teams definitely can do this. Any team, really. 
Um, you know, and then, but just like that, you know, we've seen teams like, it kind of reminds me of the Rams a little bit last year. I do like the Niners a little bit better this year than the Rams last year. I think they're more complete, but a very good system, you know, without having an elite quarterback, you know, Garoppolo had a great season. He could be a great quarterback. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's an elite system. That's kind of why that where they're at and that definitely can get back. But sometimes those teams have a tough, uh, you know, road getting back there. Uh, but I still have the nine, even with that being said, even though that still applies to any team, any 32 teams, if they're in the situation, um, you know, I trust the Niners can kind of get back to that spot because, uh, you know, well, I love the coaching staff on both sides of the ball, but they, they don't have any holes. That's the main thing. There's really no holes on this roster. I mean, yeah, maybe they're going to need another corner for the future. Maybe they're going to, you know, Jimmy Ward's a free agent. Maybe they need another safety. They can re-sign him. Um, you know, another offensive lineman maybe, even though it's, it's you know, it's a fantastic, you know, scheme. Uh, great players, some young players there. They're going to get some guys back next year. You know, there's no holes in this team. They have an elite pass rush. Elite pass rush can take you places. Uh, in the front office, you know, John Lynch and the guys, you know, they're, they're proven they could actually, you know, find more talent. You know, they've proven that. So that's like, that's, you know, the main reasons why they're back in the top five. You know, most of the time, some of those elite system type teams, when they go on runs, it's a little harder for those teams to get back. So that's something to keep in mind, maybe why they're not top three, but we're splitting hairs at this point. They're a top five for a reason. They're a Super Bowl contender, elite Super Bowl contender in the Super Bowl right now. For a reason, um, so really like this Niners team. This is where I surprise a lot of people. Number number three is where I surprise a lot of people. Something to remember is that it's not the same teams every single year. There's always that team. The Niners, for an example, there's always a team that takes a step up. We're kind of predicting here, um, but, I, but I like my prediction here. I got the Buffalo Bills at number three here. I, I really like this Bills team, and everything is lining up for them at maybe the most perfect time, and it's some very good job, but you know it's a very good job at the front office. But there's a little bit of luck involved, I think, too. Uh, well, the Bills, we know the Bills have a very solid young team. We know that they're they're a very much improving team. We we saw the the, the strides they made this year. Uh, I mean, we even seen them two years ago make the playoffs with a mediocre team at best. Uh, last year, take a take a step down, and this year, yeah, with a lot of the young talent they brought in to kind of retool that team that made the playoffs two years ago. Uh, took a huge step up pretty fast. A great coaching staff, an improved coaching staff. Uh, a near elite defense. It was not an elite defense in my eyes, but near elite. But I think it's an elite defense in the making. Because you think at what this defense was, what their identity was. They were they were so good because because what? Uh, top tier secondary, you know, a great safety duo. Tredavious White's an all pro corner. Uh, the linebacker duo of Tremaine Edmonds and Matt Milano. Um, you know, they got some solid pieces at D line, their pass rushers, you know, that, that's kind of where I'm getting at. They were, they were that good of a defense without, you know, anywhere near a top tier pass rush and nowhere near the, the nine, any of those teams. And, and they were still that good. So they are a, they're a good pass rush. They are a better pass rush away from being not only an elite defense, but a damn scary one, you know, maybe one of the better ones we've ever seen really. And I mean that. Um, and why I said that everything's kind of aligning at the perfect time, they're going to have $89 million in cap space, $89 million in cap space this offseason, and at the same time, really their only must-re-sign free agent is Jordan Phillips, who had a heck of a year. Um, that's really their only re-sign. A lot of these teams with the, with the big cap space number, they got a long list of guys they got to re-sign to kind of get back to where they were last year, and then they have to add some on top of that to get better. No, the not the Bills. They have they have enough money to do all that, but they don't even need to do all that. Um, you know, just re-sign Jordan Phillips, go into free agency. What are your biggest needs? I, I really think they only have two needs, uh, maybe multiple positions. You know, in terms of starters, but multiple guys at those need. You know, at those needs, which is pass rush to make it an elite defense and wide receiver. Uh, and kind of bringing up the example again. You know, the point again where they're at the perfect. They're in the perfect situation. They have the perfect cap at the perfect time. Why? Because this is an excellent pass rush free agency class. Excellent. Uh, they have the money to spend. A bunch of fits that I love for them in free agency. Multiple guys. They can grab multiple of them. And their other need, well, back up for a second. They can spend their money and have some still on that pass rush and free agency. They're going to have money left over for the future or whatever they need. Their other need, receiver, Take a look at the receiver draft class. What do you see? It's the best receiver draft class of all time. 
and that's going to be their only need going into, and I'm confident in it, going into the draft. So they fill all their holes. It's a complete team. It's an improving quarterback, a quarterback on the rise, an elite defense in the making. Um, we've seen teams good go from good to great in these situations in one offseason. Really, it's not one offseason. They've done it for a couple now, but one more offseason. They, they, are, they are in the driver's seat. They are in the most perfect situation. I, you know, I'm not a Bills fan, but I am pumped for the Bills in this situation. Uh, and this is why we got to kind of come back to this video after free agency in the draft because they can sit there and do absolutely nothing. I've seen it before. I don't think they're going to do it, but if they, they could do that, and that could be a mistake. Uh, sometimes when teams do that, you know, they don't want to overspend on mediocre players, average players, or they don't want to hurt their future cap, which I don't see the Bills – Hurting that, you know, they have the space here uh, coming up in the future. So I, I like the Bills. I like what I see from Josh Allen. Yeah, he needs to improve here and there. I expect him to. Um, you know, talking about needs, you know, maybe they need a backup running back behind Devin Singletary for the future, but they got the young guy like that, Dawson Knox. You know, the offensive line that did a great job. In the you know maybe resign Quentin Spain. Not going not going to take a whole bunch of cap there. The Bills are in a great position. That that could be that team that makes that jump. It's not a, it's not even a hu humongous jump as it is because they were just in the playoffs, and you know you could argue that they probably should have won that first playoff game. Would they have gone anywhere after that? I, you know I don't think so. But you know we it's not a huge step up from where they were. You know there's going to be another surprising team uh, that steps up. I don't have that team uh, in in my top five here, but we can identify down the road who that team you know possibly could be. I mean, there's some sneaky teams you can think of. But down to number two, I like the Seattle Seahawks. I'm at number two. Uh, you know, I think my top two are pretty clear. I think my, my top two are pretty clear cut for going forward here for this next year. Um, you know, the Seahawks were Super Bowl contenders this year. I mean, when it came down to it with all those injuries, you know, maybe we, I mean, we were all confident the Packers were going to beat them. They had, you know, a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, a terrible amount of, uh, you know, crucial injuries, you know, costly injuries there. Uh, but they were Super Bowl contenders all year. To me, when healthy, they were they were easily the second best NFC team uh, this year, and that's you know while battling the Niners. Um, but at the same time, you know they still had some big holes. You know they had the injuries on top of having you know yeah they definitely can use a tight end in here. They definitely can use another receiver for Russell Wilson. His offensive line. I mean, what elite quarterback has this type of offense line? Like it could be much better. The defense. I mean, you have guys like Clowney and Bobby Wagner, and you know I like the way Quentin Jefferson played, but. There's really nothing, you know, standing out big time about a unit on that defense, um, but it's still very good. So with all that, they were still that good. Now going in, you know, into the offseason, uh, a whopping for this good of a team, $69 million in cap space. Yeah, they have some guys to resign. Um, nothing they're going to have to break the bank for, uh, for besides maybe a Jadeveon Clowney, which it's not going to cost anywhere near, you know, $69 million in one year's cap. Um so they can they, they have the space to get their correct guys back uh, and and some you know they don't it's not a team that has like a bunch of holes but for a team with that type of quarterback you would like them to clean them up a little bit they're they're in the correct spot you know the right time to clean that up they they have a, a very solid opportunity to go into next season with Russell Wilson playing at his very best uh, and with you know maybe looking you know roster wise all the way through. Um, the best that they've ever had, really. I know they had a ridiculous team in the past, but uh, they can clean this up pretty easily. And even without cleaning it all up, you know, e even with you know maybe leaving, you know, they maybe were going in next season, and we're talking about, yeah, I guess they can use something better here. Even going into a season like that, they're still a contender because they have Russell Wilson. Because they have much more talent than that. Guys are going to get healthier. I like the Seattle team. I love that they have that much cap space. That that, that looks great for them. It, it looks great. I, I feel like their best football is coming this this next year, maybe even the year after that. You know, then you know it's still a future team. You know, it, it's pretty crazy, but it is. So they're my number two. Looking forward to them next year. Hopefully, they can stay healthy because if they were this year, um, they very well you know. They could have been in there this year. You know, it's hard to take anything away from the Niners there. And then, um, you know, because they were that good. But the yeah, Seahawks, you, you, we can't sit here and say they, there was no chance. You know, they definitely had a legit chance if they got they were healthy. Number one, it's got to be the Chiefs, the team that's in the Super Bowl right now. Um, you know, like I said, I had a clear top two for next year, you know, in my opinion here after sitting down and, you know, going through all this. And I was back and forth on it. But I, I had to go with the Chiefs. You know, to me, it's crazy to actually think that uh, – that the Chiefs team, who some could argue, anybody can argue that they're the best team in football right now, you know, even if you think it's the Niners, whatever, like you can argue the Chiefs are the best team in football, can they actually get better? And the answer is 
the 100% correct, there's only one right answer. The answer is yes. This team that might be the best team in football with the best player in football, with the fastest team in football, could and will get better. You know, it is absolutely wild, but it, it's 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 the facts. You know, it, it's it's the facts. You know, they have – and look at the defense too. The defense from last year to this year, insane jump. Uh, and it's their first year switching to a 4-3. It's um, you know, it's Spagnola's first year. You know, they adjusted things as the season went on. They had, you know, they had some injuries on the D, the D line. They got Juan Thornhill out now. You know, the, the second year guys going to come back next year. They have needs at corner. I mean, they they could use another. I mean, they they could use another pass rusher. They could use another linebacker. You know, they they could use another offensive lineman. They don't even have a. You know, I like Damian Williams, but they don't have a true you know, number one running back. Um, Mahomes is only going to be in his third year playing uh, next year. You know, all of that, we're, like, that doesn't sound like we're talking about, you know, the t- a top two team in football today as we're talking. It does not sound like it. I don't know if I've ever seen that, honestly, you know, I, out of a top tier team like that. I don't know if I've ever seen that. You know, the room for improvement is ridiculous for a top tier team. That's basically what I'm getting to. So I expect them to get better in the offseason, which is absolutely crazy. And really, in an offseason like this, with this type of. You know they have some they have some cap space. They got to re-sign Chris Jones, which I, I believe they. I mean, worst case they franchise tag him, um, but they have some cap space too to help themselves. Looking at this free agency and, and the draft though as well. Um, you know, on top of already having a polished but young and best quarterback in football. You know, all that. I mean, this has to be the number one team of the future. You know, I'm not saying they're going to win every single year. You know, then you know. It's, it's it's tough to do. It's it's very tough to do. But I mean, this is the number one team for next year. Um, you know, I, I think it's, I don't want to say it's a fact, but I, I feel very strongly about it. Uh, but top five teams, you really could argue, uh, you know, the teams I left out in the beginning of the video, I had a four teams that I, I wanted kind of to put in, but there was reasons. And maybe a lot of the, a lot of these top five teams kind of have the question marks, but those teams kind of had too much, too many, uh, for me to put them in. And then you got other teams, you know, after this that are pretty sneaky. You know, I look at a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers who already have a, uh, a very good defense. They got Big Ben coming back. You know, kind of can brush up the offense a little bit. Um, you know, with uh, some draft picks. Um, you know, so th- they could be a sneaky team. You know, how good is Big Ben? You know, where are they going to be at? Is the defense going to be as good as last year? They got to resign. So there's some question marks there. That could be a sneaky team. You know, the Bucks. The the Bucks are a deep sneaky team because um, they got real good at the end of the season, but they have a lot of free agents. They do have a lot of cash space, but they have a lot of free agents. Um, Bruce Arians can take that team somewhere. You know, the defense is uh, rapidly improving. A lot of young talent. It's a very sneaky team for next year. I, I like the future of some teams, but I think it's too early to say um, teams like the Cardinals, the Broncos. You know, I, I like those teams for the future. You know, I, I don't. I, I'm not really going to call them a sneaky team for winning the Super Bowl next year, though. Um, you know, I mean, the Rams could get back. You know, they have they have a cap situation actually. They you know not necessarily this year, but they kind of got to worry about their future cap. Uh, but they can easily get back. Uh, the Eagles, if they're they're healthy, but a lot of injuries. You know, worried that could happen again. You know, Carson Wentz. Um, you know, we know he has the ability to play better. So the Eagles could be a sneaky team. And um, you know, you know, you expect the Cowboys to be, but it's hard to call them. You know, any. You know, they're. I mean, it's hard not to say. You know, they they can't. It's hard to say they can't win. Um, but yeah, first year coach. You know, it might be an adjustment period there. Uh, I'm going to sit here and talk about every team and how they can be a contender or not. These are the top five. I did want to mention those sneaky ones there. Um, but uh, And then we talked about the, the four teams that I had to leave out but definitely could be involved when, when we you know talk about this after the free agency and after, after the draft as well. Um, so pretty interesting. I want to hear your guys' top five. Let me know your, your thoughts. I'm sure I'll get ripped for something. I'm not really sure what yet. Maybe the bills are too high. But uh, I like the situation they're in. Hopefully everybody's, everybody agrees there. If not, that's all right. We have plenty more videos like this. We'll have full free agency and NFL draft coverage. We have a recent mock draft. We got a senior bowl this week. We'll cover that. You know, we'll have winners and losers when that's done. I'm very excited for all that. Super Bowl, we'll have predictions, score predictions, keys to the game. All that's coming. We have some extra time to get ready for all that. Uh, daily content here at the Goat House all year long for the NFL. So please subscribe to both of our channels. Follow us on Twitter. Link in the description comments for all that. But thanks for watching. That's going to do it for this one. Goodbye.